give the Lord a great big hand clap, please. I'd like to welcome, welcome everybody out all over the internet to New Day Christian Center, a truly upper room, Holy Ghost filled and controlled church where Jesus is Lord and the Holy Spirit's an absolute authority. Amen? Amen. So, yes, give them all a welcome. We love you, all of you out there. And uh, we are so happy to see you responding and being ministered to by the videos and by this ministry. And I'd like to send our love out to Australia, to Brother Terry Bahumas, and to our other brothers all over uh, Africa and, and all over India and Pakistan. God bless you, mighty men of God. We're so proud of you. And uh, we can't even put into words just what a treasure it is to be involved with uh, men that are out there on the front lines in, in their, your home country, but to us, they're foreign countries, and just breaking the, the brush and making a path and, and preaching Jesus and raising up churches. And we're so proud of you, men of God. And you're held up every day by, by this ministry in prayer and intercession. And, and I know that the, the great apostle that's overseeing your works on behalf of Harvest Time Ministerial Fellowship is a mighty man of God. And he's getting ready to go on a mission trip to go visit you men. Just like out of the book of Acts where the apostle Paul would send Timothy to minister to the churches, to set things in order, to, to strengthen that which is weak encourage that which is fainting and the apostle terry is going as a representative of of uh, harvest time ministerial fellowship and uh, 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 his ministry also uh, pointing to jesus ministries and we are in covenant uh, fellowship and brotherhood and we're all one family and i believe with all my heart even more churches are going to spring up as another increase of mantle increasing mantle of authority dominion and power comes upon you ministers in jesus name amen. Amen. amen and release your faith with me as we pray and come further into the presence of the lord right now father we just thank you for the blessed privilege while we still can to assemble together here in this church in this holy place on this holy ground for holy purpose that's, that's what the Sabbath is about, Father God, separating for holy purpose, for a holy time, in a holy gathering, with holy people uh, gathering together to worship, praise, and hear from, and to receive from a holy God, a holy Jesus, and a holy spirit. So, Father, I ask you to make Pastor T.C. step aside, not be seen, not be heard. But let the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Ghost, take over, teach what you would have, speak what you would have, express what you would express without interference from this natural man, the limitations of my flesh or anyone else's. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Let the word go forth beyond my intellect and impart, deposit, and implant revelation knowledge, kingdom deposits, Increase into each and every one that has ears to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And I, just a side note, I don't know, even know why it's important to me, but I, God is good. And uh, I was sitting in my office meditating for a few minutes before I came out and prayed with everyone. And I looked up and, and, I, and I saw the picture where I uh, uh, had gone up to Conway which is a suburb of Toad Suck, Arkansas. <laughs> you got to be a real brave man of God to go and do battle at a place called Toad Suck. I mean, that, that's like that's like you know that's like real warfare right there. And when we had sent Pastor Daryl and Sherry out to Conway, Arkansas, to establish and take over a church there, what a great word they work they did. But a bunch of us from the home church there in Canton went up and to uh, set in place and set in order much of what Pastor Terry is going to do. Lay hands on Daryl and Sherry and, and preach a, uh, a message for them in their, in their new church. And 
we're standing by, there's a picture in my office, me and Pastor Darrell standing there behind his pulpit, and I'm wearing this exact suit and tie. And I didn't realize that I, I go, wow, that's exactly what I'm wearing right now. It's the exact same suit and tie. And uh, that had to have been what? How many years ago? Over 20. Brother. I think. 99, how many years ago was that? 30? 25 years ago? And uh, look at that. I'm wearing a 25-year-old suit and still looks good. So you don't got to spend a lot of money to, be, to, to look nice. and You just got to be a good steward of your stuff. And uh, I am a prosperity man, but I don't have to have all brand new stuff to feel prosperous. Just take care of your stuff. Be a good steward. And uh, God will make sure the shoes don't wear off on your feet if he has to. And uh, it just amazed me. I said, wow, Lord, that's awesome. I'm wearing a, a, the same suit I set Daryl in, in his church in. He, the exact same tie, too. Uh, we both had a little bit more hair. <laughs> I think, I think, uh, I think it was, this suit was a little bit looser, but I could still fit in it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Are you ready for the word? Amen. Open up your Bibles with me to Revelation. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to get in it. And uh, for everybody out on the internet, I just want to make it real plain. Don't don't make any comments. Don't send me any bad letters or anything. I tell you exactly uh, up front. Now, we've already covered Psalms uh, 83, which we are living in right now. Ezekiel 38, we went through extensively, which we're entering into even as we speak. Uh, Zechariah. Daniel, we've covered all those books. Uh, then the Lord diverted for, for some specific messages that he wanted to speak to the body of Christ and also for our healing Sundays. And then now he's released us and directed me to go into the book of Revelation. Why? Because we are about to encounter these very days, these very things. Amen? I mean, we are at the door of it, not somewhere down the road. The road's over and, and the Lord's hand is on the doorknob. Amen? But let me make a disclaimer and make it very clear. I am not an expert at, ex at eschological things. I'm not an expert at end-time teaching. But if you'll look right straight ahead at chapter 1, verse 3, this is the reason I'm, I'm being obedient to what I think all men and women of God should be doing in these last days. Blessed is he that readeth, and he that hears the words of this prophecy, and keeps those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now this is the only book in the entire Bible with a specific uh, address to the reader that if you read this book, there's a blessing that comes upon you. So I want my people blessed. I want to be blessed. I want this church blessed. I want my family blessed. I want everything to do with my life's fear and influence to be blessed. And that's exactly why I'm, one, obeying this, because we will receive a specific blessing just if we read it, if we have ears to hear. It didn't say if you be an expert. It didn't say if you go into this really having a, a solid foundation on end-time teaching. But we are not fools. We see the evil day coming. And the best preparation for that evil day is to be blessed of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And to have information on what's coming. And all we got to do is read it together. So I don't have to be an expert. I, ha I don't have to be able to, to uh, refer to this and that and that and this and all this other stuff. We're just going to start reading it. Okay? We're gonna add, and there's, before we get uh, any further, you're going to notice as, we, as we're reading this, there's two things that pop up over and over and over again. That's the phrase, ears to hear. Amen. It, over and over again, you hear Jesus say, have, if you have ears to hear. There's a qualifier in everything that he addresses, and you're only going to get it if you have ears to hear. All right? So let's just lift up our hands right now and say, Father God, not only we declare right now by faith, and we pursue your blessings of obedience, and we, and we declare that we will have ears to hear. Not just detect noise and sound, but ears of the Spirit connected to our open heart to hear and receive 
what you would speak to us in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And then the other, the other comment that he makes over and over and over again, which will kind of validate Pastor a little bit and some of these other brothers, is the word repent. It's, it's repeated over and over. To each address of the church, there's a, there's a call of repentance for something or some area. Now, I've had people really ridicule me and, and accuse me of real harsh things because I've been preaching repentance. But if this is an end time book and Jesus is re repetitively saying repent, 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 and I've been preaching repent, repent, that would tell you that maybe by the Holy Ghost I'm lining up with what the Spirit would have uh, His way by saying to the last day church, the same thing he's saying in the word, repent, repent, get ready, have ears to hear and repent. If we have ears to hear, it will lead us to repentance. Amen? Now, I want to point out something else as we go into this. People shy away from the book of Revelation. Oh, I can't understand it. Well, I can't understand 90% of the Bible until I meditate on it. Amen. It's not laid out for fools. You've got to dig in it. To get understanding. Those that seek will find. Those that ask will receive. Those that knock, it'll be open. And that's why everything about this word, you got to understand by your spirit man. Real understanding, head knowledge, you'll, you'll just be saved and, you'll, and you'll, never, you'll never walk in the word. The walking in the word of understanding and revelation only comes by your spirit man. And you've got to dig deeper than superficial letters on paper to understand the wisdom of what's being revealed. Amen. Hidden, then revealed. Amen. Amen? Now, when you get into Revelation, people wrestle with this because, well, it just doesn't fit with the rest of the New Testament. You're absolutely right. Because what you don't understand is after three chapters, the church isn't mentioned anymore. So the priority of this book is not to the church, it's to the world. Now the church should know what's going on to tell the world. But this is not, here's what I'm trying to say, but thank you Holy Spirit. This is not, the Re book of Revelation is not part of the New, Te New Covenant. Come on. It's not a mercy book, there's nothing but judgment in here. It's not a grace book. There's nothing but judgment in here. That's why it doesn't fit with the rest of the New Testament. It's not part of the New Testament. It is past. Now the grace dispensation is over. The dispensation of the church has come to a close. It is a dispensation of judgment now. So it does not fit from Matthew to the rest of the uh, books of the Bible because it's not part of the New Covenant. It's part of the... It's what comes after the grace, the mercy, and the favor of the new covenant. Now, you've rejected that. Now, here's the covenant God's releasing with the world. Judgment. That you have earned and you deserve. So when you try to, well, it's in, it's in the New Testament. Yes, it's connected in, in, this, in the leather of the New Testament, but it's not part of the new covenant. That's why it doesn't fit at all. And you keep wrestling trying to get it to fit with the rest of the new covenant, and that will add massive confusion to you. The, the dispensation of grace is now closed. Now God's got a whole different personality toward these people he's addressing in, the, in this book. You've got to understand that after chapter 3, he's, he's talking to Christ rejectors. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. He's not talking about people that missed it. He's not talking about people that tried and, and somehow didn't get, figure out how to get saved. Salvation is superficial. Even a fool can pick it up off the ground. It is a simplistic, it's the simplicity of the gospel. God deliberately made the gospel so easy, somebody with any intellect whatsoever can understand God loves me, paid for my sins, and if I'll say, yea, Lord, I can be saved. Amen. A fool can understand that. So now after chapter 3, he's not, he's not talking to anybody except Christ-rejecting nations. 
And the attitude is completely different, so it does not flow with your New Testament covenant that you're used to living in. But it's what's coming upon the earth, as even as pastor speaks. Amen? So get that, get that in your mindset. There's, there's two things that you're going to hear over and over again. Ears to hear, and if you have ears to hear, it'll bring you to repentance. And then you're going to hear judgment. There's no good news in here. The good news is this. We're not, we're not in this, the rest of this book after chapter 3. That's the only good news about it. You, you even look as we start reading here in just a minute to the churches, he re- rebukes every one of them. So all of us that think, you know, grace, 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 well, where's your head? He's talking to the churches, and every one of them he's got a problem with. Amen. So we, we got, that, should, that should alarm us to this grace mentality that anything goes and God understands. Uh, if, if, if that's your mentality, pay close attention to chapters 1, 2, and 3 with me. And listen as he's, he's not symbolically talking about stuff. He is addressing the church. He's addressing people. He's addressing the church. He's addressing pastors. People, pastors, and the church. Those are the three categories he's addressing. Amen. After that, he addresses nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the good news is we're not here for the tribulation. We're not mentioned. The, the, the church is not even brought up through the, rest, through the rest of this. Why? Because we're in his presence rejoicing at the wedding supper of the Lamb. Amen? Amen. But as we're going into it, you've got to understand, if, if, if Jesus walked in this door, through this wall right now and said, I have something to say to you. We have this mentality, clear up even here to the finish line and the sound of the trumpet, that hallelujah, what's it to you? God understands everything's good. It's grace. Okay, with that mentality, let's read chapter 1, verse 1. And I'm telling you, if he walked in here right now, you would see nothing but love in his eyes, but there there will be a rebuke. So get, get this... Get this mindset of everything's okay with God out of our minds, and let's contend for the faith. And let's try to purge ourselves of foolish things in this last hour. And let's literally try to set aside things that don't benefit the gospel. Get Cast off weights and sins that so easily beset us that we can stand without rebuke in His presence. And I think that's probably one of the number one things we can learn going into Revelation, is he's, he's talking about things he does, doesn't like, and he rebukes the things he doesn't, he, he, uh, uh, that, that he doesn't like, but he also points out the things that they were doing right. Amen. So, so what he has to say to us is up to us. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. Not every church had the same amount of correction brought up. There was one where he had very, he said, I only got one thing to say to you about what I, I wish you'd have changed. So how we stand before him is based on our decisions while we're yet standing in his presence for judgment or reward. Amen. Amen. We will not be judged like the nations are judged. We're judged through the blood of Jesus, but we're judged for rewards. Amen. Amen. And the whole reward is this, good and f- well done, good and faithful servant. That's something we contend for. Amen. Remember, remember the stewards? They, they all behave differently. It's not up to God just for, see, he saved me by grace. Now I take that grace and I work for his glory. So let's contend for the faith in this last hour. Let's purge ourselves of foolish things. Let's get rid of things that so easily beset us and distract us from this this finish, this last stretch to the finish line. Let's go for the gold. Let's let's purge ourselves like precious gold and silver and get rid of the wood, hay, and stubble and things that don't benefit the gospel. That when we stand in our presence, he has very few things to say against us. And here's, you know what? I do have this to say to you, servant. Well done. Amen? That's what we should be contending for. And that is up to us, not him. Grace will give us the ability to do it, but we have to have the heart to pursue it. 
energize that faith by a heart to do. Let me say that again. We activate that faith by having a heart to do. We activate that grace by having a heart to do. Amen. Amen? Those who are willing and obedient will eat the good of the land. Amen. Hallelujah. You've got to have a heart to do. Remember, woe unto those, cursed be those that hold back their sword in the time of battle. There's a the time. Let's get with it. Let's, let's have a heart to do. Amen. Amen? In, in this last hour, let's, let's, let's make a covenant decision that to the best of my ability and by the grace of God that he's given us, we're going we're gonna to run past the finish line, not limp not sit off to the sidelines. We're going to pursue the, the ring of gold for the glory of Jesus Christ, not let anything beset us, not pain, not failure, not self-defeat, not self-condemnation, not distractions of the world, lust of other things. We're going for the gold for the glory of the King. Amen. amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? Hallelujah. So let's get started. Chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Now, if 2,000 years ago it was shortly come to pass, bless God, it's in our face right now. Amen? Let me say something else. A lot of people say, well, Jesus is revealed in the book of Revelation. Uh, I don't know where they get that. I don't really see Jesus' personality revealed in the book of Revelation. Uh, I see, I see his anger and his wrath revealed. It, I don't think the revelation of Jesus, it, it's not revealing him, it is the revelation from him. It's his revelation. Do you understand the difference? I really believe this is what God gave him. Now this is my revelation to give to you. So it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It doesn't reveal his personality and everything. And that will all, and I've heard people teach that, and that makes it even more confusing. Well, I don't know where he's trying, I don't know, man, what are you talking about? But when you understand that it was a revelation that God gave him to reveal to Paul, John for the end time saints, then that has a different aspect to it, doesn't it? Amen. It's his revelation. This is what I, he was called to reveal at the last days. Amen? Amen? And it does reveal him to the church. In these first three chapters, to some degree, after that, all you, all you really see is just God dealing with people that said, I don't want Jesus, and I don't give a rip. And God said, well, that's exactly what you're going to get. You're going to get ripped. Amen. Amen? Amen? So you don't want to be here after the rapture, folks. Dear God, thank you. It's, it's, if it's not by grace, I'm in trouble. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. See, see the, the phraseology? to show unto his servant. So it's a revelation that Jesus received from God to give to us, uh, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. That's John. Blessed is he that reads, readeth, and they that hear, they that hear the words of this prophecy. And keeps those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Dear Lord, dear Lord, uh, say now. now. We're living in the at-hand times. It's happening now. What was written 2,000 years ago is now in my life. That should wake us up. John to the seven churches. Now, who's the specific subject that's being addressed? The churches, the corporate churches of the body of Christ, which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace. So the first thing he says to him, even though this thing reveals nothing but judgment, the first thing he speaks to us is grace and peace. That's critical that you, you understand that. It doesn't matter what, what we know is coming in the future. God has released to us grace and peace. Amen? So... He's released grace to have ears to hear and peace if we repent. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Glory to God. And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness 
and the first begotten of the dead. Glory to God. And the prince of the kings of the earth. Aren't we kings and priests of Christ Jesus? And of the all, all sovereigns of all nations are under the king of kings. He is the king of us as kings and he's the king of all earthly kings. Amen? Never forget that. We show, we show too much respect toward natural man and very little honor to the true king. Hallelujah. And from Jesus Christ, verse 5, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. Say first begotten. begotten. Who's the second, third, and fourth begotten? Us. Amen. He He was beat, died on a cross, buried, and resurrected from the dead so that when we are buried with him in the blood of salvation and baptism, we have resurrected life by faith, and we are the second, third, and fourth begotten from the dead. Amen. Amen? But he had to make the way. Glory to God. Now, we follow him in that way by faith and by the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> Unto him that loves us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm washed by the blood of the Lamb. Six, it has made us, I underlined that, has made us kings, I just quoted that, and priests unto God. So who's the king of kings? Jesus. Who's the kings he's a king over? Us. And who's under us? Kings of the natural world. I hate to tell you this, but King Charles is under our authority. Did you hear me? The king of Sweden is under our authority. The king of Norway is under our authority. Those are kings, but we're we're kings under Christ, and he's king of all kings. Hallelujah. And we'd get all nervous if we had to go stand in front of a king, and we we, we take no thought of how we behave in front of the king of kings. I'm telling you, we need to get some reverence and holiness and some awe and respect back into our hearts for the, the king of all kings. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he comes with clouds. Say, millions of saints. And every eye shall see him. He's talking about the second coming. And they shall, they also which pierced him say the Jews and the sinners of all kindred of the earth shall well because of him. Man, when we come back with Jesus, everybody's going to see us and they ain't going to be happy. Get that settled right here in chapter 1. He's saying he's coming back in a cloud, a great cloud of witnesses. We're going to be on, that's not the rapture. That's the second coming. We've already been raptured up. The seven-year wedding supper of the Lamb has taken place, and we come back with him on white horses. When he comes down into the valley of Megiddo, sets his foot on the Mount of Olives, we come back as a great cloud of witnesses. Every nation, every tribe, every tongue will see us with him and wail in fear and dread and terror. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So just remember that when people mock you. There's going to come a day when they'll see you again, and there will be no mockery in their mouth. There'll be dread and fear and terror and horror on their face. Why? Because every bit of this is true. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is which was and which is to come, the all, the all, the almighty. Man, he's laying down some foundation right right at the beginning of this. Who's who in the universe? Who's who in authority? Who's who in dominion? And who's going to respond to who in this end time? He's laying it right out in the first half of chapter 1. 
I'm coming back as king of all kings. I'm bringing my saints with me, and you are going to tremble in fear and scream for help the second you see us, and there's no mistake about it. I will be known as the almighty God throughout the entire earth. Hallelujah. Woo, somebody look at somebody and tell them we're on the winning side. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will rule and reign with him if we're first, right now in this time, willing to suffer with him and for him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't look for the safe place. Look for strength for the battle you're called to. Amen. Verse 9, I, John, who also am your brother and companion, here we go, in tribulation. Now that's not talking about of the tribulation that we think. It's talking about tribulating for the gospel's sake, for Christ's sake, who, for who we identify with. They'll hate you because of me, he said. If they hated me, they will hate you. That's the tribulation he's talking about. Amen. Persecution for the gospel's sake. Amen? Some of people we know, and some of us in our lifetime, have been persecuted for our own foolishness sake. You don't get a reward for that. <laughs> you need to repent of that. But when you're persecuted for the gospel's sake, great is your reward. When they mock you because you're an open Christian, great is your reward. When they won't hire you because you have Jesus on your shirt, great is your reward. When they look for reasons to fire you because they catch you praying in the lunchroom, great is your reward. When your family and friends turn their back on you because you won't get certain procedures done and you won't follow certain demographics of society and they oust you from their fellowships and they sec separate you from their friendship, great is your reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 10. Now look, look at this. Look at this. Well, let's back up to verse 9. And I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the Isle of Patmos, that is, or on the Isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God. Why was he there? For the word of God. Why was he in prison? For his testimony of Jesus. For the gospel's sake. A fellow brother in the same suffering. Look at somebody and tell them the American church has been way too pampered. The Western church is way, way too favored. Yeah, there's a day coming soon when we will be fellows, brothers and sisters, in the same suffering as Brother John. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the, he's on the aisle called Patmos for the gospel's sake. For the word of God. For the word of God. Now you compromise the word, you may not go to prison. But you won't be able to be the fellowship of the brethren. Hallelujah. So what, what, what's this already telling us right here? There, 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 Jesus is the final authority. Your, your reverence toward him and his word is going to cause trouble. But if you suffer the same suffering as your brother John, you're going to get the same eternal heavenly rewards. Amen. Glory to God. It's kind of interesting that we're being reminded all this when we need to hear it the most. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Isn't God wonderful? Yes. Verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. My Lord, I could Pentecostal preach on that for a week. How many people come to church constantly in the flesh? I'm serious, folks. Well, they didn't get nothing. I don't like the wallpaper. I didn't like those songs. Just they hit the door in the flesh, go through the whole service in the flesh, go home in the flesh, and sit around all week in the flesh, but they're saved. These, there's a reason he said that. He didn't have a visitation of the Lord because he's sitting around stacking marbles. He didn't have a he didn't have Jesus show up and reveal himself in all of his majesty with all revelation knowledge of who he really is from top to bottom 
because he is sitting around writing out an appeal to get to get out of jail. In other words, he was in the spirit when the spirit showed up. So that means in the, in the middle of your trials, you can be in the Spirit. He's in prison in the Spirit. He's busting rocks in the Spirit. He, 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 he has no freedom whatsoever, but on the Lord's day, he was found in the Spirit. Oh, look at everything just coming. And they come to church and they sit Soak and sour in the flesh and cannot get in the spirit because the lights weren't right, the songs weren't right, the programs weren't right. He had nothing right, but he was in the spirit in the Lord's day. This thing's loaded with revelation, folks. What's that saying? In these end time suffering uh, tribulations of humanity in this last hour, you can still stay in the spirit and receive supernaturally from the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, that's good stuff, Holy Ghost. Thank you. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet. So number, number two, he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and being in the Spirit, because remember I just said all the way through here there's a key phrase, Ears to hear. The first thing you saw that being in the Spirit gave him ears to hear. Amen. Do you, you do understand there was other prisoners around him. Amen. Nobody else wrote nothing down because nobody else was in the Spirit and nobody else could hear anything. Amen. Well, I don't get nothing out of that little weird church up on the fourth floor. That's because you don't come in the Spirit. When you're in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, you'll hear all kinds of stuff, and you don't have to be in the perfect place. Amen. And it's critical you get this because there's nothing between now and the rapture that's ever going to be perfect for you. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing in this natural realm going to be even nice, let alone perfect, between now and the rapture. So get this. Have ears to hear on the Lord's day, which is every day when you choose it to be. Amen. I was in the Spirit, and being in the Spirit, I could hear and see things nobody else could hear or see, and it changed everything for my future. Amen. See, conditions don't, aren't, aren't, aren't what's keeping you from the glory. It's being in the Spirit. And that's a decision. That's a lifestyle. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And bless God. I'm going to hear from God. I'm going to see God. I'm going to be ordered of God. I'm going to be blessed of God. I'm going to be overcoming in God. And there, no matter how bad it gets out there, I'm in the Spirit on the Lord's day. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm in the Spirit in the Lord's day. And I hear and see things nobody else can hear and see. And that enables me to do and have things nobody else can do or have. Yes. Hallelujah. That's an end time message for us, folks. Now, now th that's pretty good news, but it's going to go bad and stay that way all the way till we come back on these horses he's talking about. Amen. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, send it unto the seven churches. So what's, what's he want to reveal and who's he want to reveal to? This will define whether you understand why you're, why you're blessed. He wants to say something in writing to the church. So it's for you to understand. Amen. Why would he say write it down and send it to the churches and make it so confusing nobody can understand it? Come on. Come on. So he said write it down. Send it to the church. He wants the church to know. Yes. Amen. So these first three chapters are to us, for us, and we should understand from them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, send it to the seven churches. 
which are in Asia, and unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, unto, unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And he, so right there, those are the churches that the letters were sent to. Those are the churches that he addresses in the letters. Amen? Amen. Now in these letters, there's seven churches, seven pastors, seven angels, seven lampstands. Amen? Amen. I turned to see the voice that spake unto me. Hallelujah. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Hallelujah. Seven spirits, seven candlesticks, seven stars, seven churches, seven pastors. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. This is awesome stuff already. And I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of God, clothed in a garment down to his feet, or his foot, and gird about the paps or the chest with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white as wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as flame of fire. Now that's the same Jesus that the, he allowed him to pull his beard out, put a crown of thorns on him, beat him. Now in his unrestricted by this flesh form, his true uh, revealed and unhindered presence, this is what he looks like. Amen. You ain't going to mess with him. Amen. Now you tell me as we're, as we're going through here, anywhere you think you're going to run up and high five him. Now see folks, if we really read this, you'll see a lot, you'll just put away a lot of foolishness. Amen. Are you listening to me? You'll put away a lot, a lot of foolishness from the body of Christ, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Now you explain to me, would you, hey, brother Jesus, how's it going? Let's go jump in daddy's lap. You going to do that? Did you just read that? You're going to do exactly what John did. (gasps) (laughs) So much presumptive foolishness, lack of reverence and holiness in the body of Christ. Yes, he embraces us. Yes, he loves us. Yes, he died for us. But he is God. I turned to see the voice. He was clothed in a garment down to his foot, gird around his chest with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass. And if they burned as a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. That's the same sword that's going to kill all the all the soldiers in the valley of Megiddo with one word out of his mouth. And he, his countenance was as the sun shining in its strength. In the very heat of the noonday, that's what his countenance, his face looked like. Hallelujah. And when I saw him, I high-fived him and said, let's go paint rainbows and make jello mountains in heaven. Folks, that's being taught right now, and they're calling that person a prophet. And that person saw cows on tractors in heaven. And folks, millions and millions of followers. Such foolishness in the body of Christ. And I fell at his feet as dead. There you go. This is the same John as pictured as always having his head on Jesus. John the beloved. John that Jesus turned his mother over to. Said, woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. He said, John, I love you so much and trust you so much. I am trusting you with my mother to take care of her while I'm gone. That John, when he saw him in his full glory, fell dead at his feet. 
no nonsense, no foolishness. The glorified Christ. Amen. That's who died for me. That's where he that's what he left. And put on his flesh to come down in this world and be rejected by the very vile creatures he, he created. Amen. But that's him in his fullness. That kind of God died for me. Loved me while I was yet a sinner. Hallelujah. Oh, He loves us, but don't play with Him. Oh, how He loves us. Don't be foolish with Him. Love Him. Reverence Him. Adore Him. Honor Him. He is worthy. He belittled Himself for T.C. Hudgens and became a servant from this glory that I might be saved. And He is worthy of reverence and honor and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when I saw Him, I fell at His feet as dead. And He laid, what a loving Jesus. He laid His hand upon me saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am He that liveth, and was dead, say, for us. for us. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things, listen, which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou saw are seven churches Amen? Amen So what are the candlesticks? What is the light of the world? The church Hallelujah Hallelujah What are the stars? The angels. Now that word angel, circle it, is also the same word for pastors. So when he's saying angel, he's saying pastors. Amen? When he's saying pastors, he's saying angels. Now I think that, I can't prove this, but there's things throughout the rest of the scripture that kind of line up with this. As surely as each one of us have a personal guardian angel assigned to us at birth, I believe that every church has an angel assigned to it and I believe every pastor has an angel assigned to him or her I really do so what he's going to say to a pastor he's going to have to have the angel cooperate with that pastor to get that work done that's why they're ministering servants ministering spirits to minister on behalf of the heirs of salvation Amen. amen I believe that there's a specific angel attached to New Day Christian Center there's a specific angel attached to Pastor T.C. and a guardian angel passed, uh, attached to the man T.C. Amen. Amen. And I believe that when he's addressing this angel, which also means pastor, he's addressing two entities. I can't prove that, but I've just always believed that in my heart. Amen. Just a little sidebar there. Okay? Chapter 2. Can I have five more minutes? Unto, here, now he's going to start addressing the, the churches. So let's get into this. Unto the angel, say pastor, of the church of Ephesus write. Now this is Jesus addressing the church. So let us be teachable. Let us have ears to hear what he says to one, he says to all. Amen? We might be not guilty of the same things, or we might be guilty of all of them from every church. We, we might have great things to repent of as a church. Who knows? Let's get into this. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write. And let's also take another sidebar. Some people believe that these churches are dispensations of the church age. Some think they're regional uh, addresses of regional churches. Some, some think they're just different churches. I, I think it's all those. I think it's dispensational attitudes of the church. 
and I think it's also just the church. Amen? So it doesn't matter. No matter what he's saying, we should have ears to hear. He told us that. Have ears to hear. Don't say, well, that was them. No, what he says to one, he said to us. Let us have ears to hear, okay? Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand and walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I Here's another phrase you're going to see over and over again. Ears to hear, repent, and I know your works. Amen. There's nothing hidden. I know, he says that to every one of the churches. He's saying that to every one of the pastors. He's saying that to each and every one of us. He knows our works. Amen? Amen. So we better let that settle down in our heart with some reverence and fear and trembling also. Amen? With some holy, holy fear. Glory to God. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cannot bear them which are evil. Praise God. How many of us can have that part right there? Or how many of us foolishly have foolish friendships with worldly people and don't think anything about it? No, he said, I know that you hate, those, I hate people that are evil. So <laughs> isn't that interesting? Jesus said that's a good thing. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles. Here we go. Well, that's a great place to start. Everybody with a laptop nowadays are apostles and prophets. Amen. Can I ask you real quick out there in the world out here, what is the sign of an apostle? Now, if you went to leadership school, you should know this. If you're an apostle, most traditionally they, they believe that all apostles had personal revelations from Jesus. In other words, they all saw Jesus. All 12 of them did, right? And the modern-day apostles, since then, most of them say they had a visitation from the Lord. I've seen Jesus one time, not face-to-face, -face, but like this, okay? Secondly, the sign of an apostle is they birth new churches. They don't go around getting people to sign up to be one of their churches. Now, there can be a church that said, we recognize you, Pastor T.C., and we want to give you spiritual authority over us to speak into the leadership and into the that can happen, but that's what's going on nowadays more than just going out and building churches from the ground up like we're doing. Amen. 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 Uh, just because somebody says, "Oh, I'm an apostle because I got eight churches that call me an apostle," whoop de freaking do. Where did you go where there wasn't a church and raise up a church from nothing? That's the sign of an apostle. Amen. Amen? That's a required sign of an apostle. And thirdly, apostles not only hear from God, but they have power and authority beyond the normal. Amen? Yes, Pastor Darling. Like Elijah, he was a prophet. The prophet and apostle ministry of authority and dominion is very, very similar. They just do different things. Apostle, uh, a prophet sees, declares, and brings dominion and breaks the ground, an apostle comes in and sees and sets in order and builds up what the prophets saw need to be done. Amen. Amen? So a sign of an apostle, signs of wonders, building churches and visions of the Lord. 90% of what's going on are not apostles. And he just said right here, why would that be one of the very first things he addresses? Because it's one of the very first things that's abused. Hallelujah. See, he already knew about all these loons with laptops and all these social club prophets. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. I, know that, I know they works. You can't, under, you can't handle evil people, and you, uh, you can't stand people that they, they say they are apostles, and they're not, and you have found them as liars. Jesus has no problem calling somebody, you're a liar, you're not an apostle. Wow. You know what that means? You better watch what you stamp on your business cards, big mouth. Apostle, prophet, bishop, uh, zama, zama, zama. Jesus would look at that and say, liar. Right in front of everybody. <laughs> that puts some fear in you, won't it? Huh? Glory to God. 
Now, there's nothing wrong with pursuing your office and your calling, but you better not be playing. Don't boast of something you don't have. When I say you're a prophetess, you're safe. A seasoned minister is recognizing a calling in you. But you better be careful you don't add to it. I'll see it. I'll, I, I remember when uh, Brother Copeland was called out by Brother Hagen and said, now it's time for you to enter into the prophet's ministry. He didn't, start make, he didn't make cards and say, I'm getting ready to be a prophet. He didn't even acknowledge it until a man that was already in the office had come up here. It's time for me to acknowledge and set you in that place. And Copeland had to do it out of obedience, not self-exaltation. Oh, hallelujah. That's good stuff. Amen. That's good stuff. Uh, which say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars, and has borne, and has patience, and has... Now watch. Oh, this is critical. I love this part. And for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Underline that, put a star by it, and say, this will give me energy to finish the race. When you're doing it, look, listen... For my name's sake, you labored and have not fainted. See, you won't give up when you're really doing it for the glory of Jesus. See, if I quit, it's not going to glorify Jesus. If I give up, it's not going to glorify Jesus. If I sit in the sidelines and look for a safe place to hide, it won't glorify Jesus. i got to labor to give Him glory. I'm I'm not going to faint because I want to give glory to Jesus. Isn't that interesting? He said, I know that. I know what kept you going was your desire to not faint on my behalf, to not give up and give me glory. Isn't that that precious? He said, I know you're doing this because you wanted to glorify me. Wow. So see, when you're doing it really to bring glory to Jesus, you won't quit so easy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You labored for my name's sake. Wow, how many people you know aren't doing nothing for his name's sake? They're just looking for the perfect church to entertain them. What kind of prayer of worship you got? What kind of kids program? What kind of teen ministry you got? What kind of blah, 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 blah. Uh, how you labored for my glory, for my name's sake. And you didn't faint for my name's sake. In other words, when I'm really doing it for Jesus, I won't be a quitter. Come on. Glory to God. Whoo! Somebody just take a minute and let me get a drink and meditate on that. What are we doing for him and what are we refusing to quit because of him? Amen. Man, that's, that's got some solidity to it, doesn't it? That'll put some backbone in you, won't it? Amen. Hallelujah. Quitters aren't lovers. Come on. Amen. Did you hear me? Quitters aren't lovers. You don't quit the church if you love the church. You don't quit assembling together if you love the people you claim to say love you, brother, every time you, you went there for a while. You won't quit laboring for Jesus when you love him and want to glorify him. Amen. I didn't say you won't trip now and then, but you won't quit. Amen. Remember, I was taught that. Never quit, never quit, never quit. I don't care what happens, never quit. I don't care how bad it gets, never quit. I don't care how foolish you acted, never quit. I don't care how bad you blew it. He, he, he just said, I know for, that you did this for my name's sake. You were working for me. He didn't go unnoticed. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Hallelujah. Now look at verse 4. Here we go. High five. Grace, grace. Jesus understands. Nevertheless, I have something against you. Now, the same loving Jesus said, man, I know you did this for my name, and I love you for that, but i got a problem with this. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you right now, if I stand before the Lord right now, I have no doubt whatsoever in my mind. I, I am not deceived. That Jesus is going to say, I have a problem with this, 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 this. I don't know how long the list is, but I know for sure he's got problems with me. Oh, brother, you're not a faith man. Come on, folks. You're not a grace guy. Come on, people. He's talking to the church. I love this about you, but I had a problem with this about you. Uh, 
Nevertheless, I have something against you. Not a lot, just somewhat. Because thou hast left your first love. Wow. There you go, right there. How many times have we lost the zeal of our love in what we're doing? Amen. Guilty. Amen. Nobody else going to raise their hand? I'll raise it for you. I'll, I'll stand in the gap for you. <coughs> Guilty. Amen. I have to stir myself up in my... In, my, in the love of God in my most holy faith. That's one of the greatest things about praying in tongues. That's what I'll do. Amen. Well, I don't pray in tongues. You're, you're not walking in the love of God. I promise you. You're Amen. not walking in your first love. <coughs> it takes praying in the Holy Ghost to keep you in the love of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right off the bat, TC's nailed. I don't stay in my first love. I've cried out for it. I get in it, and then I lose it. I get in it, then I lose it. Come on. I get in it, and then, well, nobody's recognized me. Nobody's appreciated. I lose it. My first love for Jesus, everything was bright and cheerful and great, and I didn't care if they peed on my feet. I, I just loved Jesus. I just, glory to God. Let me go preach to somebody else. Oh, get out of here, you sicko. Oh, praise the Lord. The first love was so, every, I was in love with everything, everybody, everywhere. Amen. Where did it go? I lost it. He's got a problem with that. We're not even halfway through the first church, and he's already nailed me. Now, I didn't say I lived there, but this stupid flesh I live in jerks me back and forth. And he's got a problem with that. Don't say, well, Grace, he understands. He didn't say I understand. He said, I have something about that. I want to talk to you about that. Do you have ears to hear? I don't like that. Look at somebody say, I love you more now. <laughs> All of a sudden, I really love you a lot more. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm being serious. It's kind of silly, but you get you get more loving real fast when you realize what you think is okay and you assume is all right. Grace, grace, grace. Uh, right off the bat, he's saying, "I got a problem with that." He's not talking to them yet. Who's he talking to? Us. Say it like Daryl does and Conway. Usins. I'm being serious, folks. We're we're just into chapter 2, the very first church, and he's nailed most of us to the ground already. And he's saying, I don't like it. Come on. There's a lot of good things about you, but you're not in that love for me like you used to have. <clears throat> Nevertheless, I have something against you because thou hast left your first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou hast fallen. See, he called... Losing your love? Fallen. Whoa. That's really not a good thing. You've come to a lower state. You, like you fall into sin, you've fallen from love. Amen. Oh my gosh. Please have ears to hear this. You know what that means? You'll work more for Jesus in this last hour. You'll do more for the Lord in this last hour. You'll do more for the brethren. You'll do more for the church. When he's, he's saying the first thing I, I, I got a problem with, you've lost your first love. You've fallen down from where you used to be. Hallelujah. Are you folks listening back there in the cheap seats? Amen. Remember, therefore, for once thou have fallen. Here, here it is. Repent. Not I understand. Not, just remember it's grace. Repent. You change. You change. Repent and do your first works. I'm not even going to talk to you folks. I'm talking to you out there, out there on the internet, sitting in church, sitting in your ministries, watching me after your services. How much of what you're doing for God? Oh, I'm just so worn out. I'm so tired. It's such a, a drain on me. I wish this and that. How much? It's just a big burden to you now. Repent, do your first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will remove your 
candlesticks. Now, what were candlesticks? Well, he'll shut the place down. Has he been shutting some places down? Why? It got professional and not gospel love. I will remove that candlestick out of your place except that you repent. Unless you repent, the whole thing's going to get shut down. Oh, dear Jesus. But if thou hast, thou... Now watch closely. If this thou hast, what you have, that thou hateth... You've got this one thing going for you. It's kind of tricky in the King James. But this you have, or this is what you got going for you. That you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now, Jesus is getting down to some real serious conversation. He's not talking about love, love, peace, peace. He says, you hated this, I've got a problem with this, and I hate this just the same way you hated it. Isn't that interesting? In a grace Christian child of God, he's talking about things he hates. And people, actions of people he hates. We don't even think like that, do we? I'm telling you, folks, we're coming right up to the finish line so out of focus from false doctrines and false conceptions that we don't even realize how much we've got to get back in, in line. Amen. That's why this is loaded with repent, 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 repent. Amen. Amen. So let, let's please, please take that to heart and these three chapters allow us to get repented and back in track Amen. with our first love, our first zeal, our first purpose, the first way we used to do it. Amen. And joy will come and praise will come and peace will come and excitement will come. But we have to have ears to hear and repent. Amen. Amen. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, see, you've got to be an overcomer, particularly in tough times. Amen. Will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God? And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna. We'll stop there. And we'll pick up next Sunday with the next church. So what did he say to the first church? Who was the first church? Ephesus. What did he say to them? You hate false apostles. You hate liars. You hate ministries that aren't what they say they are. And I hate it too. But I have a problem because you're also people that have lost your first love. You're still in church. You're still doing some good stuff. But you're not doing it with the head over heels, goofy, in love with me heart you had when I first saved you. Amen. Amen. My, I'm, I'm standing in front of the whole world. I'll tell you right now. I want that. I remember how much fun life was when I first got saved. And I had all the stupid stuff. I had stickers on my refrigerator, <laughs> gospel tracks in my car, in every pocket, everywhere at work. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell enough people about Jesus, how, how good he was. I didn't, I didn't care. I went to the bookstores just to buy trinkets and goodies that were Jesus stuff. I was caught up in Jesus. But now we got so smart and so reserved and so intelligent and so discerning that we're, we didn't even realize... We're below where we used to be. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Father God, with all honesty, with all sincerity before my brothers and sisters here, peop a thousand people on the internet, heaven and earth. Father, I'm sorry. I honestly, before you, I want that first love I want it with all my heart. I want the joy of the Lord. I want the joy of my first salvation. I want that blinding to the world and all I see is you. I want it again, Lord. I repent of all things that have caused me to fall from that. And I ask you, stir it back up in me. And by grace, I will pursue you like never before. 
And everyone that had that same thing in their heart said, Amen. Amen. You learned something today? Amen. Give the Lord a great big hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. And remember, Jesus is Lord, and God loves Garland. Amen. <laughs>